welcome back everybody to part two of the GT40 budget build for this here Fox body, this Ford Rari named Scrappy. So left off on uh, last episode, we got the rotating assembly in and all that stuff. It was kind of a pain to do it in all the dust that we got out here, but we got it done. Uh, there were some questions that popped up about my abilities not really my abilities. They're just double checking to make sure I'm doing things right. And I understand it. But I uh, want to let you know that all the bearings were plastic gauge. And there is a new timing chain and timing gears sitting over there. I just haven't put it on yet. And uh, so although it may seem like I'm reckless and irresponsible putting this together, it's because I am. I'm really not. So it would just take an enormous amount of time to film all that stuff with the plastic gauge, measuring gauge and feeler gauges, all that stuff, uh, getting the tolerances, everything else like that. So I just film uh, the necessary steps for assembly, um, just the quick touch and base and stuff like that. And then everything else is just behind the scenes. So what we need to do now is I want to throw the oil pan on this guy so I can start putting oil in and uh, priming the system up because the next thing I'm going to need to do is put the heads on and start doing the preload and the lifters and the valve train and all that business. So I want to start getting some oil in it. Uh, so I need to bang out that dent in the pan and then hose it off and then we can put it back together. So let's go ahead and jump on that stuff so we can get on to this uh, top end and get this day over with. Motivated today. Hey, what's up guys? So as I'm sitting here editing this in the trailer out at the horse show, I realized that the audio is messed up through the whole thing. Uh, the microphone didn't connect or something like that. So bear with me through this video. I'm going to do my best to try and clean it up and bring it forward. Uh, still a good video. Don't get disheartened. It'll be worth it in the end. I promise you. Thanks for sticking around. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so oddly enough, that took way longer than it should have to punch out the bottom of the pan and get it cleaned up. The gunk was really caked on there. All right, so I got the new timing gear and chain over there. We're going to throw that on real quick. I know we can put the timing cover on, which is... Honestly, guys, most of this is going to be POD at this point. Uh, trying to get that grime off is just crazy. I'm having to use like a wire wheel and stuff like that. And there's just nooks and crannies you can't get into. Anyways, it'll be POD and we'll be uh, good with that because nobody's going to get close enough to see it. Let's turn this tiny chain and gears on. Pop this little dowel in. Get in there, little fella. Probably going to have to turn this engine some. Get right on. I think that's it. Tighten her down till you quit. Anybody know what the torque spec is for that bolt? Oh, okay. Torque spec for cam gear bolt. 40 to 45 pounds. There we go. All right, time cover. Nope. I'm an idiot. Didn't put the thrust plate on. Ah! Ah! Oh. Let's do it. I was test fitting mostly, um, so let's not judge too hard on that one. Okay, so fucking me. You know. All of this stuff's been apart for weeks now, so missing some of this stuff is probably going to be very common at this point. You are so beautiful to me, can't you see? Alright, now we'll go back on. I'm going to just edit this part out, or that last part out, and we'll just pretend like that's where it ended up to begin with. It never happened, you know? It's my way, you know? However, I want to do it, not vice versa. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. I don't know the words to say.
song, that's right. I'm pretty sure. Anyways, got the break-in oil filter on here. It's cheapo Napa, Napa Gold. Then we'll get a can in after we get it on there. So let's get this cover on. And then we can get that pan on and flip her over and start working on that valve chain. All of it. Because we got new roller rockers, new push rods. And so with these GT40 heads that I picked up, they've already got 3 8 studs on them and dual rate springs. I'm hoping, hoping that they haven't been uh, milled or decked and uh, the factory push rods give us the right preload. You know, some of this is going to just come together with no issues. I haven't come across that yet. Everything seems to have been an issue, but something is going to have to go together correctly and not be an issue. Huge steaming ball of foreshadowing. We're just betting on, I don't know what I'm betting on. I'm just motivated to get this sucker done. If you don't ever plan on pulling the par off again and you want a really good seal, this is the way to go. Some thread sealing on all of these, and then when we do the heads, all those bolts are getting thread sealing as well. What the needle? So I just got them set on here for right now. Uh, and we'll get the balancer up in there. And then once the balancer centers that cover, then we'll tighten the rest of them down. Cool, so tiny cover's on, balancer's on there. It's centered up, we're ready to throw this oil pan on. Getting excited, we're getting close to getting this thing painted. And getting it painted is what makes everything feel so much better. And it's all dirty, you're still not sure. It's kind of like this. I don't know if this was all worth it. Uh, I don't know, kind of hesitation, so. All right, so I'm gonna clean up some of these little spaces where there's still some R RTV in here, and then we'll get the gaskets on and get that. As I've said before, these things are my favorite thing ever. Get the oil pan nice and tight at every point possible without screwing up the integrity of the pan. Just beautiful, beautiful thing. You know, it's the little things in life. Sometimes when you're putting stuff together, just make everything so much easier. This is one of those things. One of those little things. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you do. So it might be hard to see from over there. I'll get another shot of this oil pan that I banged out. Luckily it didn't crack or anything, so it's all good to go ready for some oil. Gotta throw the drain plugs back in, then we can flip it over, start plugging this thing up full of oil, and then prime the shaft. Or prime the engine, I'm sorry. Using the pump. Gotta put all 750,000 of these bolts in here. And, uh, We'll get back at it. Alright, now that those are all torqued to two Ooga Dooga spec, put in the drain plugs, flip her over and throw some oil in it. Cause this is how we do it. One step closer to Belgium. All right, I'm gonna start dumping some oil in here. That way we can uh, prime it. And I'm not worried about scuffing any bearings or anything while we're turning it over to set the preload on these rockers. You know, probably need to throw the heads on before we prime it. But I'm gonna fill it up first. That way when we prime it and we can put the heads on, they don't shoot oil up on the other side of the shot. You know, fella. Drink up. 
This is uh, Lucas engine braking oil. It says thick AF right here. And that's what we're going to use. Should do beautifully. It's definitely thick. There's pooling in the top of here before running down. Let's get these heads ready. So somebody was mentioning if I take the number one piston, I turn it around so the dot is facing to the back, and I put it on the other side in the number five, it increases the compression. And do the same with all the rest of them. Increases the compression just a tiny bit. I haven't had a chance to look up and see how true that is. Let me know if any of you guys have ever heard any stuff like that. Uh, don't think it's something that I would even consider doing on this because I'm not totally sure of the deck on those heads and I really don't want things... You get the point. So, we got these beautiful head gaskets from Ford. They're essentially a, uh, a Felpro style head gasket. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think they are actually Felpro gaskets. So this engine block did not have any dowels. I think they came out when they took the heads off and wherever those went. So I'm going to try and get the dowels out of those heads over there or these heads over there here. And so we can set these on here and they'll be good to go. And uh, then we'll get the heads put on. Exciting stuff, y'all. Exciting stuff. All right, so we got the dowels in, slapped on the head gaskets. I'm going to just set the heads on there for right now and turn it over just to make sure there's like no interference at all. It's very, 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 very unlikely that the pistons are actually going to hit anything on the cylinder head with the gaskets on. Um, but you know, I just want to make sure, just for funsies. Might just pop out all the spark plugs just so it doesn't have any compression. And just take a look. I just feel like I should. Sometimes if you feel like you should, you should just do it. It's one of those things. And I didn't clean the surfaces of these heads, so I'm going to clean those real quick and we'll get back at it. Alright. Oh, so these are GT40 heads. They call them, or the enthusiasts call them three bar heads. So you can tell by the three bars on the side of the head, stamped in the side of the head. So these guys here are kind of what the old school guys used to do for cheap horsepower. So it's got a better uh, or smaller combustion chamber. It's got better flow, significantly better flow than the E7, uh, as well as I think the exhaust and intake valves are larger. Bam, good to go. Throw in a couple bolts just to retain it for a second. And I'll clean these up a little bit more. All of these bolts are gonna get RT. That's just the way it goes. Things will never change. So you can see this has a 3-8 studs in it. 3-8 studs. Also has studs for the valve cover. That's pretty neat. I don't have any nuts for them. But we'll get that figured out and I'll go buy some. Like I said, I'm hoping that this is not, as one would say, um, decked or milled. What's the right term for that? Shaved down. Made thinner. All right. Clean the surface up. It's just the way it is. Things will never change. Let's see for if any reason at all it wants to pop the heads up. Take out these spark plugs. So the reason I went with these GT40, which also it says GT down in the corner, forgot to mention that part, but uh, with these GT40 heads, just the regular GT40 heads, is the GT40P has actually a, uh, I believe it's 20cc smaller, uh, it can't be that much, but smaller, um, leaked out all my oil, dang it. Dude, I can make some messes. I'm telling you. Like that one, I just made another one. Just talking about messes. Oh man. Alright. Now that we've dumped all of our good oil out. Anyways, GT40. <sighs> Even though the GT40P has a smaller combustion chamber, I think the valve sizes are similar. Somebody else could probably point that out. Is that the GT40P heads the spark plugs that are a different angle. So any of the regular headers or anything else like that either get to get really short spark plugs or figure out a boot situation or dent the tubes to get uh, spark plug sockets on and get them in and boots on, stuff like that. And I didn't really want to deal with that. So these will flow good enough. 
for what we're doing. And if we really want to get crazy, then we'll get some AFR heads or something like that. Because I don't think we'll really port these out. Even though you can get a lot of power out of porting these, it's still just not as good as the like AFR aluminum heads or some trick flow heads or something along those lines. So that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. Also got new head bolts. If at all possible, you don't want to reuse the old ones, especially ones that are 40 years old. Not really 40, but still, you get what I'm trying to say. Would go with some ARP ones, but I don't really feel like spending the money on something that uh, we can't use on the 351. Like I said, we're trying to mitigate some cost. This mitigates some of that sunk cost. Getting the ARP ones, you spend an extra hundred dollars, and you can't use them on the 351. But that just was not a good idea. These Molly ones come with red sealant on them already, anyway, but we will throw some extra in there. Just for funsy. And we'll drop a couple too. Just seems like the right thing to do. All right, let's turn it over. See if we got collision. Like I said, very, very, very doubtful. I'm just gonna do it anyways. Just the peace of mind. All right, we are good. Top dead center, compression stroke. Cylinder number one. Let's get these tightened down and then get our push rods down in there and see what we look like. We can throw some rockers on. So we're gonna step tighten these. I'll do like 25 foot pounds uh, going middle out and then we'll go back around and do up to 65 pounds middle around. Sixty-five. And back around again just to make sure. Cool. Now before we throw those other heads on, let's go ahead and get these push rods in and rockers up on and see what we look like. Alrighty then. These are just factory like push rods. Pull them out. Make sure they're all good to go, there's no scuffs or anything on them, and slide them in. Did not opt to go with uh, larger diameter ones. Did not think that this engine had strong enough springs for it. Now, our new lifters. So, I told you I wanted to get steel ones, so I went with these PRW. And there are two different kinds. There's a, like a, it's still cast steel but it uses the same uh, seat that the factory one does, the stamped ones. These, however, have the roller bearing uh, seat. So that's why I went with these. They weren't that much more expensive. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right. So here is our steel roller rocker and it's self-centering on the valve anyways. And it's got a needle bearing pedestal. And so that's nice. That'll work good for us. And they're all 3 8 pedestals and uh, 1.6 ratio. It appears I have made a critical error. These are not 3 8 Emotional damage. Unfortunately, they are larger than that. I told you it wasn't going to go smooth. I prepared you. I hope you were prepared. I was not. Sounds like a trip all the way to downtown Phoenix in the morning. All right. For now, let's throw the other head on and get it all torqued down. That way, when we get the rockers in the morning, we can slap those on and we will have finished. And we will have a finished valve train. Sad to set of day. All right, so the other head is slapped on. I'm gonna have to go in the morning and get those uh, studs. That's a shame, but it is what it is. So, I'll see you in the morning and we'll get this project finished up. It's time for a beer and the sun's game. In a nap. All right, so we got all the studs installed, swapped out. And then uh, we'll put the rockers on and see where we're at on the pedestal here or on the top of the valve if I need to open up these 
guides, but shouldn't need to move anything. They were pretty tight fit for it. So we'll see what it looks like. We'll start throwing on some rockers because that's what you guys came for. So now that all that is settled, these should be good. We'll see how they seat first and I'll pull them off, put a little bit of lube on there. I like that these have their own retainer. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to move this guide plate here. It's off just a little bit that way. You can see here, just a little bit over. So we'll move this guide plate so that'll sit down. Then we'll put the other one on over here as well before we move it, see exactly where it needs to go. Okay, so I pulled the guide plates and I tried to push them over. They wouldn't pull over. It wouldn't open up enough for these to sit correctly down on top of the valve. So since these are meant to run without a guide plate, since they have their own retainers here, we're gonna throw them on. I took off the guide plates and we're gonna put it in and then we're gonna see what our preload looks like. Hopefully we don't have to move it around anywhere because it looks like it's got a really good angle as it's sitting here. Gotta hurry up and get this thing done. Got a horse show to go to this weekend. Gotta get out on the road. So hopefully all of this just kind of goes back together. I don't have to mess with it that much. That's the hope, anyways. Hope isn't always uh, what happens. You know what I mean? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn it over just enough to where I can get actually where a top dead center compression stroke over here. So I'm gonna take the, the slack out of these over here, or the lash. So we got zero lash in this one. I'm gonna take it to three quarter turn. All right, so it spins freely, it's not binding. Right in the center of the valve. Let's see the dive. All right, so we're all the way down here and we are damn near parallel with the surface of the head. So it is about as close to 90 degrees from the stud as you can. And I think that is good. You guys let me know what you guys think and what you set for this. I know there's 700 million different calculations for this, but right now we're about 90 degrees from the stud. And that looks pretty darn good to me, but I'm an idiot, so let me know. Go down the line here, take the lash out of all of these. I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out and we'll get back at it. All right, the valve train is all done. I'm glad it went together well. Went with three quarter turn preload on all the lifters. And uh, like I said, at full open, it's 90 degrees. I think that looks perfect to me. You guys let me know a difference. Uh, I'm sure you guys that wanted to run one sevens 
would be even further than that or should it still be in that area anyways that's what uh, I got out of it and I think we should be good to go to put the rest of this back together so we got all the rockers in like I said they got these self-centering guides on it. it's real nice stuff and they just sit right there on top of the valve got rid of the guides that were back here they were just binding up with what was in place uh, but we're not hitting anywhere. Everything's wide open. I need to come through and wipe this out again. Some dust got up on it, but everything looks good down in here. We are all ready to slap this all together. Now, as far as the valve covers go with these guys, uh, as far as I know, we should be okay with the valve covers that we got. However, what we'll need to do is that we'll have to cut the baffle on this one here. I think it hits somewhere in the corner over here and then we got to flatten it out some more. Um, but it looks like somebody may have already flattened it. We'll take a look, let's see. Now as far as these in the back go, these ribs, some of these ribs are going to have to be cut down and shaved down in order to uh, clear the arms. That's just from what I've been told to know. I've never put roller rockers on a 302. So I'm not sure every time I've done roller rockers or roller lifters, anything like that, I've had tall valve covers. So we'll see if those fit. If they don't fit, we're gonna run into intake plenum issues by putting different valve covers on because that intake plenum sits right on top of the factory valve covers. They do make spacers for the GT40. I need to look to see how much those are in case we have to do something like that. But if they're expensive, again, we're back into the problem with doing a budget build and all the intricacies that come with doing some sort of swap along with it. Will it be worth putting a spacer in there and leaving the A9L and all that archaic crap on there or would you spend the money on a carbon intake at that point? We'll check that out in the next episode where you get to see me put this all back together and throw it back in the car and I'm excited to get it done and I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching, watching me struggle, watch me miss stuff. Make sure you hit it in the comments. I know some of you are watching every little detail. I like it. It's okay. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. As always, have fun.